Welcome to Geek Like a Girl, where we implement legal project management and tech tools to make the law more livable. You won't get to see my face much today. We're gonna jump right in. Today we are going to talk about Asana and have a little introduction on how you implement the livable law task matrix in a system like Asana. Let's jump in. Okay, so when you first come into Asana, you're gonna see that there's a thing called projects and you have to create your own projects. Now, a project can be what you make of it. It can either be a case, and this is something that I did here. So if you see someone versus somebody, um, my boards, my different buckets of um, tasks in a single case would be, for example, maybe drafting the complaint, maybe I call this pleadings instead, and then I would have fact discovery, expert discovery, motion to dismiss briefing, motion for summary judgment briefing. Maybe you want to get that granular and you want to have each case have its own little project. Another way you could do it is that you could have each project be a set of cases or all the cases in your firm. You can absolutely do it that way. You could maybe do cases per jurisdiction if you're working in a single state. Maybe you have cases in various counties and you want to break it up by county. Uh, maybe you want to break it up by subject matter. You have some racial discrimination versus section 1983 versus another type of civil rights or constitutional law issue. You may want to break them up by um, whether they're in federal or state court, whatever that may be, that is how you wanna break up the universe of your projects. The first time I saw this, I found it pretty daunting because I thought, well, how, how do I do it? Really, it's up to you. You get to pick, that's the beauty of it, right? So let's assume that you're gonna put all your personal injury cases, whatever, whatever case you have, in your PI cases. If we go to the board view right here, you're gonna see that you actually have I actually call them case one, case two, case three, and we would, if we wanted to add another one, we'd call it case four. And then we have tasks under each of the cases. So you would be able to view all of your cases one by one with all of their tasks. And you may tell me, whoa, whoa, if I have like a hundred cases, this is not very, you know, not a very nice way to look at things. No problem. The beauty about Asana is that you actually can toggle between the various views. So you could have a list view, for example. Much better, right? here we go, if I minimize all of them, I can have all of my cases listed, and then I can break it up and be like, okay, well, what are we looking at here? Draft a complaint, draft a response to motion, draft request for production, fantastic. Or you could have a timeline view where you can see along uh, the calendar what's happening, and you can also toggle in and out of the particular cases, or you can have a calendar view. And I think that's one that we are most uh, used to as attorneys, uh, but definitely you should play around with and see what type of views you can use for your tasks. Now, let's get to the meat of today. If you are familiar with the livable law method, and even if you're not, here we go, I always talk about the task matrix, and the task matrix lives in the very humble Excel spreadsheet. But I'm always telling you, hey, if you have a task management system, these are concepts you can apply. So what are the concepts we're going to apply? Well, really, there are three main things that I want you to see that you can actually implement here. The first one is the racy lacy system. So racy lacy is where you identify someone who is responsible, R, accountable, A, anybody that needs to be conferred with, C, and anybody that needs to be informed, I. So that's the racy framework. So how do you do that? The way you do it is that you go to customize right here up in the upper right hand corner and you go down and you add a field and I already added them uh, in this case, but you would add a field and you would add a field that is a person, people, team, stakeholders, approvers, and then you would you see, you should look at that. Accountable is already in there. But you would say that you want it to be the responsible, accountable, conferred with, or informed. And then you would definitely want to make sure that you add it to the field library. And you definitely want to notify task collaborators when that field is changed. So going back, what that looks like is like this. Which means that for every task, you are now going to have somebody you need to assign to responsible, accountable, confer, and inform. And if confer and inform don't always exist, but it's good for you to have them in there in case you need to confer with someone or inform someone. 
The other aspect of the task matrix is that I am very big on internal versus external deadline. And I am always harping about the fact that the internal deadline is the one that matters. So what I do is that the, the actual deadline for the case, for the matter, for the task is the internal deadline. That's our hard deadline. But the external deadline is something that I want to keep track of. So how do I do that? I go to add field and I put date. And then I say, okay, I want this to be an external deadline. And I wrote it up. Now I'm going to have two, but that's okay. You see here, date, perfect. And then you create the field, which uh, I'm not going to do. <laughs> it would bother me to have two of the same. And then you have it. You have your external deadline. So what does that look like when you're creating a task? Well, let's go here. Let's add a task. We're going to add a task on uh, October 30th. Fine. We're going to say this task is um, draft a subpoena. Okay. And we know now I'm going to click on it and it's going to open it up here. Now I'm going to sign it to myself. Great. And that is actually going to be the person, the assignee, the person who's actually doing the work is the person who is responsible. So here I would say, pick the same person. And you always want to make sure that these two are the same. Do you have to have a responsible as a field? No, I guess not. If you know assignee is the first and responsible, then maybe you don't have to have it in there. But I was being a purist since I told you it was the RACI system, R-A-C-I. I put them all in there. Then you would put the person who's accountable, which would be the supervising individual. So it might be a senior associate, a senior paralegal, a partner of counsel, whoever it is. The person who is actually accountable for making sure that this work gets done. They're the one who get called in front of the judge. <laughs> I'm joking. But they're the person who in the firm is signing off on this and where the buck stops with them. Then I would identify anybody that I need to confer with and anybody that needs to be informed. And then I would put my external deadline and you know how it functions for me at least five business days. So if I, if, if something is due on October 30th, then by definition, the external deadline would be five days later on the, on uh, the third. And then I close it out and boom, I have my task. Oh, and I put it on case one. Let's, let's just be original. So, you know what, this one's actually for case three. Boom. And now we have a task. If you go here, here it is on cat task for case three, draft a subpoena. And I have all of the racy lacy information, including an internal and an external deadline, which I absolutely love. And if you can see here, you actually have your external deadlines all listed here. So if you wanted to, you could actually move this up, which I would probably prefer. And you can actually sort them by ascending and you can say, okay, well, these are my external deadlines, but these are my actual internal deadlines. And then here you can also sort them by assignee, uh, by your, and then you can also um, sort them by who is, who needs to be conferred with, who needs to be informed, however it may be. Okay, let's go back to the calendar. What else can I do in Asana? There's a, two more things that I want to talk you through. I, th I think they're just really fantastic tools. The first thing is the task templates, all right? So I created them already, but you will see here that I have a task a template for drafting a complaint. And why would I have a template for that? Because I created a whole host of subtasks, which I know have to happen every single time we draft a complaint. And this is really, really important, especially when you have more high volume um, practices. I'm talking mass torts, personal injury, family law, anything where it's very formulaic how cases come in. You absolutely want to set yourself up with templates and with um, subtasks. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can actually set how long after you assign the task this needs to happen. So for example, a client comes in and you know, okay, well, we're going to have to draft a complaint for them. All right. So within five days of this being assigned to a person, we want to make sure that they have had a meeting with the client. And then you want to make sure that within 10 days of being assigned the task, they're actually working on creating it. You want them to have about 20 days from the time you assign it for the complaint to be done. You then want the supervising attorney to take five days to review it. Organizing the exhibit should be done at the same time as the 
uh, drafting of the complaint and then supervisor review. So you're gonna give them 25 days to be done with that too. The final check needs to be, you wanna say maybe 28 days after it's been assigned. The final review is 30 days out from when it's assigned. The preparing the summons, you would assume would have to happen pretty quickly. So probably when the supervisor gets the complaint, so let's say 25 days after assignment, and then you wanna file it uh, right after the final review. So if the final review is due 30 days after assignment, you wanna give them 31 days, right? One day after final review to get it filed. And then they're gonna have maybe another two days, another, let's say two days after that, after it's been filed to serve the complaint with a summons. And then you wanna make sure that all the exhibits are tracked into the ESI tracking sheet and you wanna give everybody time, so 35 days. And that is how it looks. And so basically look at this fantastic thing. You have drafting the complaint. The moment you assign that, there's all of these other deadlines that get triggered. And that's a fantastic way to stay organized. So what does that look like in reality? Okay, well, let's go back to the board. Okay, so what happens now? Well, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna be here in the board. And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna add the task and we're gonna go draft a complaint. Okay. So drafting the complaint is being created. You can see it on the bottom, it's thinking about it. Um, it's not in case one, we're gonna drag it back to case two, okay. And then we say, okay, well, I'm gonna have to be drafting the complaint, that's fine. But then you open it up and you get to assign all of the different people that need to be doing all of the other tasks. And so automatically all of this gets assigned out. And if you wanna add notes, so let's say, um, we are going to do the organizing the exhibits and I want to give a note. So I will assign it to whoever it is, junior associate or paralegal. You can even assign it to multiple people if you wanted to. And then you can say, okay, well, let me tell you some details about the fact that exhibits are in the folder under complaint exhibits. You should not do that if you're properly organized, but you know what? Let's just assume that maybe you have to do that. And I couldn't think of anything else to write. And that's what you would do. So this is a, really a fantastic way to create subtasks and never forget, never have something slip out of your mind. And the reason this is important is why, right? It always goes back to the same thing for me. Burnout is a using up of bandwidth that does not get replenished. Every time you find a way to reduce the use of your bandwidth, mental load, mental bandwidth, that's a win. So creating automatic subtasks means you do not have to recreate everything that needs to happen for that universe of tasks to happen, right? It's all listed out. You can just literally assign it, go through the list, and that's it. So to me, everything that preserves your bandwidth is really important while giving you the security that things are being done properly. So that's why I really, I really love um, these types of tools. Okay. There's one more thing I'm gonna show you and then I'll be done for today. But again, I really like Asana, as I said, a juggernaut. It's just, it, it needs to be used in a way that makes sense. The other thing that I really love about it is that there, it, uh, Asana will integrate with a whole host of apps. So let's talk about two that are really critical. Well, actually let's do three that are really critical to the operation of a law firm. The first one is right here. You can integrate it with Google Drive. So if you're using Google Drive or Teams, same concept, right? You can directly attach documents, drafts, um, and any exhibits, anything that is a deliverable or an external uh, item that needs to be looked at. And this is fantastic because of why? Back to bandwidth. If your team is not wasting time looking for things because they're right there, that's a win. Again, right? It's all these little little brownie points, little, st little stoppages of using up your bandwidth for things that are done over and over again. And that's where I want to encourage you to implement into your practice every day. And the other thing that I really love about it is that it encourages communication that is more appropriate. So instead of sending everybody emails all the time, and I have a whole piece of my lecture about that, you are actually messaging through the document itself and through the messaging systems that exist within those frameworks. So Google Documents has a way that you can leave comments to each other, same thing with Office. 
And this means that we're putting it all into one universe and we are unburdening your inbox because inbox stress is very much inbox anxiety is very much a thing. And we want to try to avoid that and diminish that. And this, this is actually a way to do it. And then the other thing that is fantastic is the way it it actually incorporates, um, you can actually incorporate your Google Calendar. And obviously that's really great because you probably already have a bunch of things on your Google Calendar. And so if you can add these to your Google, you can add your Google Calendar to your Asana Calendar, you will then have your deadlines and your meetings and your hearings and everything else in one spot. And that creates harmony. And we want harmony to make you feel better about practicing law. And then the last thing that I really like is the DocuSign integration right here. You can actually integrate DocuSign. So if you are onboarding clients, right, maybe you create a project that's called potential new clients, and then you have an integration with DocuSign where they get a fee agreement automatically sent to them, and then you have reminders, so on and so forth, and you can do that through Asana itself. So one of the principles of the livable law is that tools without a plan are not a solution. So I love that we have all of this technology out there, but my goal is to make it easier for you to implement it in ways that make sense in your practice. I hope this was helpful. If you have any other um, aspects of your practice that you want help with, if there's any things in Asana that you'd like to learn how to do better, if there's any questions that you have about integration, I really, really, really ask you genuinely, please put them in the comments because I would love to create videos that are targeted to whatever it is that is causing you anxiety. Thank you for watching Geek Like a Girl. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.